And when I did my VCDX, uh, that's roughly three years ago, the, the one thing that you need to keep in mind as soon as you start working on VCDX is that it's not about the actual technology, it's about knowing uh, why you actually did something. So it's about the justification of some of your design decisions. And I think that's probably the, uh, the biggest made mistake is that people don't really understand what the design is about or why they made specific decisions. So there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind when you do the, uh, the design itself. First of all, make sure that everything is documented. So if there are real important things, uh, make sure that it's documented and make sure you, those, all of those documented are submitted to the, uh, to the panel. So the panel will do the preparations and they will read all those documents. And if they have any questions, well, better make sure that you can actually answer those and a lot of those questions will be around the why did you actually implement it that way and I guess in my particular case I had a design which featured some really awkward things and a lot of people asked me afterwards why did you do that well I defended that particular design because it was an interesting uh, study in my uh, in my case and it actually allowed me to expand on all the various aspects of the uh, the political parts of the uh, the project for instance and, and that is what helped me uh, uh, obtaining the, uh, the certification. Now, the other thing uh, to keep in mind is that, for instance, it's okay to have an unsupported configuration as long as you can justify it. And that is the, the most important part. Make sure you actually understand why you're doing this and, and make sure that you know how to explain that to your peers because they're just regular people uh, you know, like you. They're also architects. They do this out in the field. So make sure you actually address them uh, the same way you would address either a customer or one of your colleagues. So yeah, as I work toward my VCDX, it's, it's a long-term process, it's a long-term goal. Um, first thing I'd recommend is that it's not for everybody. Um, they've just recently released um, a new certification roadmap. So now there's actually um, three different uh, levels of VCDX to be able to attain. There's one, um, the standard that's been there before, which, which I went through, which was uh, VCDX related to virtualization specifically. Um, but there's now a, a new track for um, desktop that's going to be there, so VCDX under um, desktop or end user computing, and then one also under um, vCloud Director, so cloud-based uh, VCDX. Um, and so for any one of those, uh, you really need to be in a place of where you're working with designs or you're presenting designs for a customer, um, or you're in a really large enterprise where you're actually the solutions architect or enterprise architect that's actually d delivering or in the process of, of um, coming up with those designs. So if that's not your key area of focus or that's not where you really want your career path to go, um, you know, I, I'd stick with other, other certification related, uh, VCP, VCAP, um, some of those other uh, certifications that are more for around how to be you know, a professional or an advanced professional in your environment. And th those are geared for, for those people doing, you know, just in the, in the ditch, you know, digging, doing stuff every day. Um, but for those that are looking for that path for, for VCDX, realize that it is. It's a long-term solution and a long-term goal. It's not something you're going to accomplish overnight. It, it takes at least about a year, um, if not longer, depending on, on where you're at um, skill set-wise. Um, the best thing to do to get you started with that, if you're not already um, in front of customers, um, find some friends to get, get together with and um, do presentations with them. You go through the... The, the concept of what would, if I was coming into a customer and delivering a design to them, um, how would I do that and how would I present that back? Um, you need to be able to have that uh, familiarity and the comfortability to be able to whiteboard, to be able to talk back and forth with a customer as they have constraints and, and comments and requirements that they bring to you. Um, so you need to be able to have that dialogue back and forth with the customer. So um, any avenue that you can find where you've got some peers that can help you out with that, it's definitely key. Um, and then the other key, uh, at least for me actually, the defense was um, relatively, I don't want to say, it wasn't easy, it was, it was difficult, but it was the easiest part of the process because um, I've already got those soft skills of being in front of the customer and delivering design. So that was, that was second nature for me. The application actually took the largest part, so it was, um, it's quite the process. You need to make sure you give yourself enough time for the application and that you've uh, done everything they've asked for. So in the application, they're asking for specific criteria. Make sure everything's in there. Don't leave anything out. Don't, you know, fill that out and make sure you've given yourself a good uh, couple of weeks to go through and, and fill that thing out and get that get your design documentation up to par. Um, because uh, you may be using an existing design, but you might need to fluff it up and add stuff to it that they're looking for that wasn't necessarily there or necessary for the customer, but you needed to have that for the, for the, the actual uh, VCDX process. 
Um, so make sure that that's in there. Um, but really, the biggest thing is being comfortable in front of the customer, making sure you can do those whiteboarding skills and, and um, back and forth um, with uh, being handed different types of requirements and constraints and being able to des design a solution on that and be able to have that skill in front of the uh, another other people to be able to deliver that too. So. so what advice would I give to somebody becoming a VCDX? That's a question I get a lot, actually. Uh, I, I achieved my VCDX in early 2010. Um, one of the first 50, number 39, in case anybody's interested, not that it matters. But anyway, uh, there, there are really kind of uh, maybe three or four things that I would really say that people need to do. Number one is be sure that you really know the technology, right? Um, you need to have a deep understanding of, of vSphere and the product itself, as well as some of the related products in, in the suite and in, in the ecosystem to know what they do and how they interact with others. I'd say the second thing is, Try to, try to be as broad as you can about what you know. Um, most of the time, being a, a, a very deeply focused a specialist in just one area isn't going to do it because the VCDX is a, it's an architect level certification. You have to be able to take a step back and look at the broad picture, right? So you can't just be a VMware vSphere expert. You also have to know some networking, you have to know some security, you have to know some storage, you have to know some operating systems. Um, third, I would say really try and focus on the holistic view. Um, this is something that I mentioned in the designing VMware infrastructure training course that we just did, is make sure that you understand all these pieces are you know, really interrelated with one another and you can't talk about one without understanding that it affects the others. And then uh, four, really be able to talk about the relationships and the impacts, not just technological but also business related. Uh, when, when we talk about creating a design, you know, there are going to be factors that feed into that design that aren't necessarily going to be just technical, they may be business driven and we have to be able to understand and, and describe and explain what the impact of those, those things coming in, whether those are business or technical, on, on the design. So it's really kind of this, these four things, you know, be really technically savvy, no more than just virtualization, do networking storage, rest of it. Um, understand that all these things are interrelated with one another and then be able to understand how these pieces impact one another and how the relationships are. And I think that'll get you a good ways towards being there. Industry experience, of course, certainly helps, but uh, you know, it, it's really about being able to take that step back and look at this as a, as a single holistic sort of piece. So, so the, the process of becoming a VCA, it's, it's reasonably well documented, right? There's, there's the tests and there's the, the creating the documentation and there's the, the defense, right? And people really focus on the defense and I think that's the wrong place to focus, in, in all honesty, because the, the thing that I think trips up most people, people the most, is you know, they, they build something and they build it to best practices, the best practices that everybody generally agrees on. But then they defend that decision with its best practice. And while that may be okay for the vast majority of the world, for the VCDXs, we're supposed to be setting the best practice. So we need to know the reason why. Uh, in my mind, the worst answer you could ever possibly give in a VCDX defense would be its best practice. And so you, you go through all that process. Um, and, and for me, the, the most important advice I could give, besides don't say best practice, <laughs> would probably be something along the lines of know every inch of why you made every single decision. If, if you did the server side and another guy did the network, you're in for a tough, a tough scene when you get asked really gnarly network questions. Um, and so I, th I think that's pretty much the, the advice that unfortunately most other VCXs give. So it's probably not new, but it, it I think it's valuable.